And earlier, the man who will soon be the new Minister for Workplace Relations joined me from Melbourne. Bill Shorten, congratulations and welcome. Thanks and good evening. You come to the job at a time when employers are unhappy with the Workplace Relations Act and so are unions, so there's a fair bit of work to do. Well, there's plenty of debate in industrial relations, but I actually come to this portfolio at a good time. My predecessor, Senator Chris Evans, has done a great job. Uh, and of course, the Prime Minister, before she became the Prime Minister, helped lay the foundations for the fair workplace laws that we now have. So I think that I'm joining a very strong team and I, I believe that whilst there's plenty of debate, I think the job is exciting, not too hard. If Chris Evans did a great job, why isn't he still in the job? Well, he's got a big role uh, outlined for him by the Prime Minister today. Skills and higher education, uh, of course, leading the government's legislative program in the Senate. But the Prime Minister has also indicated that she's promoted a range of people, uh, pushing, as she says, for some new blood. Uh, and we've seen Minister Plibersek go into health. Uh, we've seen Minister Butler, uh, with his stewardship of uh, mental health and aged care, moving into the Cabinet. And, and then I've had a, a fortunate promotion too. If a business has to shut itself down like Qantas in order to end rolling industrial action, isn't there something wrong with your industrial relations system? That assumes that Qantas made the right decision to shut the airline down to begin with, and I contend it didn't. I don't believe it was appropriate for an airline management who are paid very high sums of money and the very smart people and run a global brand, I don't think it was appropriate to say the only way we can convince our employees to change is by, in fact, damaging the Australian economy. So the assumption of your question I don't agree with, Chris. Well, if retail outlets and restaurants are having to shut on the weekends because they can't afford wages, is that a sign that you've got a good system? Well, also, let's be clear, there's challenges in the uh, retail sector and indeed in uh, hospitality generally in Australia, which I think are unrelated to uh, penalty rates and more related to the high price of the dollar and Australians going overseas. I think they're related to the fact that in the period of global uncertainty, Australians are saving more and not spending in the traditional patterns on uh, hospitality in the retail sector that they used to. And of course, the retail industry itself. There are some companies going very well and there are some which are not. I don't accept the proposition that the only way that our hospitality and our retail sectors can advance in Australia is by cutting people's pay. And unions are saying, of course, that they want to, want to have things like job security guaranteed within the industrial relations system. Is that something that any employer can guarantee? Oh, I'm not familiar with every claim. And let me be straight here. Um, I have a, a union background. I'm a union member. Uh, I still am proud of that. But I don't see my job as to uh, automatically pick a side in every claim. Uh, what we're interested in is that business goes well, business can create wealth. You can't have employees and union members without jobs. I've always understood that. I'm very middle of the road in my views. And I've got no doubt that if we allow the bargaining process to take place, employers and unions and employees will work these issues out. And you'd know, of course, though, what happened with the platform, the Labor Party platform, which was amended recently. And unions, of course, want to see arbitration now included. It. That's part of your platform. Is that something that you want to see? Well, the government's actually made it very clear, and the Prime Minister made it clear in her press conference today, that she sees part of my role as, of course, industrial relations regulation. But she's thinking about the future, as is the whole government. We're interested in the fact that the world of work in Australia is changing, that our grandparents once thought they had a job for life and their grandchildren know they'll have three or four careers, and our children and grandchildren may well have eight jobs across their lifetime. We understand that we're a modern dynamic services economy, as well as being a manufacturing economy, as well as being construction sector, as well as having government sectors. We get in the Gillard government that we need to help make sure our workers are as mobile as possible. We also get that uh, for Australians, they don't just live to work. Whilst we may spend a third of our adult life at work, we want to get the work-life balance right. Well, compulsory, I mean, arbitration, course, compulsory arbitration is part of Australia's past. Do you see any, any future for it in a modern, open economy? Chris, I haven't even been sworn in. Um, I certainly do have uh, views, but I'll be informed by the very capable department who will be advising me. I've certainly already started ringing stakeholders from all points of view. I'm looking forward to catching up with my predecessor to make sure we do the transition properly. Um, as a general principle, I believe that arbitration is a last resort. I don't see it as the uh, default position. I actually believe in the bargaining system. I believe in collective bargaining. And so a lot of the issues which I think seem to populate the front pages of certain elements of the conservative press, I think are only part of the workplace of the future. And many people are dealing with issues such as uh, the fact that for 
they're on call 24 hours a day for their uh, BlackBerry phones. A lot of people are dealing with modern issues about uh, if they've got to drive an hour each way to get to a job, can they work somewhere near the jobs that they want or can they use technology to work at home? There's a lot of people who are setting up small businesses or independent contractors. The, the old debates on industrial relations have their place, mate, but there's a lot of new issues unfolding and I think the Australian people expect us to focus on the future, not just dwell on the past. Now, Bill Shorten, some people would be saying today that you got this job because you helped the Prime Minister get her job. Fair comment? I think that the Prime Minister was very clear today. She's uh, injecting some new blood into the Cabinet. She's changing some people's responsibilities. Uh, I think she's doing a very good balancing job and she's brought in, as I said, uh, a lot of new energy for the lead up to the next election, which is still 18 months away. There are important issues which the Prime Minister articulated today which are important to all Australians. But did you get your job because you helped her get hers? I'm, I believe that uh, in terms of the position I've got, the Prime Minister's made a view about me and what I, what I can contribute. I'm very clear, I think our Prime Minister does things based upon what she thinks is important in terms of advancing the nation's interests. And again, we know that uh, workplace relations is going to be an important issue in the next two to three years. The, uh, the Abbott opposition are refugees from a time warp where they would like to bring back uh, hardline industrial relations. There's two types of conservative we've got at the moment in the opposition. Those who openly say that they want to bring back work choices and those who privately say they want to bring back work choices but just won't own up to it. Sure, but finally, surely the question is about your workplace relations system and whether or not it works and are you convinced that it works at the moment? I'm convinced that I come in as a minister to a very strong system which is very well founded and I look forward to working with all of the players in the system to both making sure that the existing system works to meet the expectations of employers, of businesses, of employees, small businesses, big businesses, independent contractors. But I also know that the Prime Minister has been very clear. She wants to make sure that we're uh, saving enough money for people's retirement and that we're dealing with the future issues of work, getting work-life balance right, for instance. Bill Shorten, we'll leave it there. Thank you. Thanks, Chris.